Hi there and welcome back to the Headbangers Ball Melodic Rock Special and it's now time to meet an artist who has a very distinguished career. I'd like to introduce you to Mark Free. Hi Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing very well Vanessa, it's a pleasure to meet you. How are you? Thank you, very nice to meet you as well. And uh, if you're a fan of melodic rock then you'll know that Mark was in some very big bands, King Cobra, Signal and most recently Unruly, Ch Unruly Child. Now why did that band split up? Because we heard such good things about you over here in Europe. Well Unruly Child started out, we, uh, we, we had a good go of it. We um, made a great record with Bow Hill mm -hmm. and uh, everybody expected great things from us and the grunge thing happened mm -hmm. in America. and. <laughs> It kind of, you know, kind of put us on the pity pot, I suppose. Oh. Put us on a rocky patch. And then um, Bo got kind of in a, in, a, in, a, in a disagreement with the label, and they fired Bo from the label and dropped us mm -hmm. two weeks after they released us. So oh. that's, that's very sad, because we heard such good things about you. Could actually we quickly set the record straight? We've had lots of requests for a video by Unruly Child. Now, you didn't actually make one, did you? Unfortunately yeah. not. We didn't even get a chance to make one. Oh. Well, let's get, let's get on to more positive things now with Mark, because there's a lot to talk about. Now, you are actually going solo now. Why did you decide to go solo rather than go back with the band situation? Well, I think it was just that I'd been in so many bands before. Uh, it was just getting to a, a point where, in, you know, I had to do what I wanted to do. And, and, and getting in bands, it's just, it just is getting... It gets too confusing at times, and, and I thought that it would be easier for me to kind of manage my own career, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm mm -hmm. going to try it solo for a while. But do you think that puts different pressures on you to actually be the one person in the spotlight? It's going under your name. I actually like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> you know, I, uh, I I seem to perform better under pressure, so I kind of I kind of like that better. Yeah. Well, we better talk about your new record, A Long Way From Love, debut album. Now, in the past, you have worked with some very big-name producers, um, but for this one, I think you just sort of did your own thing, right? Well, actually, how this came about was, uh, was that it was, um, they were basically demos that I was hired to sing. Uh, I was friends with these songwriters, Robin and Judith Randall, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And they were hiring me uh, over the over the time period between '87 and and '89, uh, mm -hmm. and as a as just a demo singer to do their songs, mm -hmm. and uh, they were uh, responsible for producing them, and they weren't really producing them, you know, top notch, and they were kind of watching the budget as well. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the production quality, I known all along, is a, is a little substandard, but uh, basically uh, it it caught on uh, uh, because. Of my my being in past bands and and uh, and so when Mark Ashton came to me and said would I be interested in releasing it as a solo mm -hmm. album I said sure you know give the people what they want mm -hmm. so and it was an opportunity for me to kind of just get out there as a solo artist for right. the first time so okay well we'll talk to Mark Free a lot more but right now we are going to let the music do the talking because we're going to check him out in solo mode live and then we'll be back for more chats a little bit later on. Touch and go, the door is open, but your heart is closed. And your hurts pay the price. You won't go away, you twice. Maybe I just a Chasing your dreams 
shock free is a long way from his Californian home being over here in England and also of course he's a long way from love with his debut album we were talking about it a little earlier um, and I know Mark that you had some guest musicians on the record with you tell us uh, who you worked with well we worked with uh, um, oh god I'm just Paul Young I mean not Paul Young um, 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 some yeah. old friends. Some old friends. I mean, it's like, I can't even remember. There were so many of them, and it happened at such such odd, different mm -hmm. time periods all over, the, all over the, you know, throughout the last couple of years. But um, uh, a couple of the guys from uh, the Nelsons came in and, mm -hmm. and sat in and, and uh, really appreciated that. So, mm -hmm. uh, actually, Robin Randall, the person who wrote it, was responsible for hiring a lot of the musicians. Mm -hmm. I just came in after the fact. Mm -hmm. Great, because mm -hmm. it strikes me that the AOR community is a very tight-knit community. Um, people th very, very artist and musician orientated. So coming down here today and meeting all these bands, that must be a lot of fun as, as well for you. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Paris and I have been long friends, mm -hmm. uh, friends for a long time in the States. Mm -hmm. and. And uh, Paul Young, I've, I've just recently met, and he's great and, and just a wonderful, wonderful singer. And, mm -hmm. and Gla uh, uh, Gary Hughes, mm -hmm. and uh, very talented people, mm -hmm. excellent bands. Absolutely. Quest, I just heard a little bit of, and they're great. So I'm looking forward to. So, I mean, how do you feel about the future for AOR music? I mean, can it compete with the likes of Rage Against the Machine and, and Nirvana? Or do you think that it's, it's kind of gone more underground now? Well, it has gone under, underground quite a bit, um, but you know, like anything, you know, music is, comes and goes in cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, they were saying in '84 that you know in '85 metal was dead. Mm -hmm. Look what happened '86, '87. Mm -hmm. You know, it came back with a, with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all c cyclical. Mm -hmm. Does it affect the way that you approach what you're doing? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I think the best thing for me to do is just to do what I do, mm -hmm. and that's all I can do. You yeah. know, because. People, people know, you know, uh, a fake when they when they see one. It's just there's something that comes across, you know, subliminally, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're faking it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I just try and do what's what's in my heart, you know, and stay true to that. Okay. And very quickly, your plans for the future. Are you going to be playing any more European shows? Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm making connections with some promoters mm -hmm. as as on this trip, and I plan on coming back uh, in the near future and doing some more uh, tours all over Europe. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Mark. Thank you very much. And I hope that you do enjoy your time here in Europe and that we'll see you again soon. And uh, we're going to go into another short commercial break, our last one, actually, because we're winding up the action here on our Melodic Rock special. And after the break, we are actually going to be meeting up with a long-time friend of Mark, as you just heard, Jeff Paris. He's headlining the whole festivities here at the Now and Then Records Gods of AOR showcase, which will continue right after these messages.